What's up everyone, I'm Mike from woodshopmike.com and today I have another round of tools from Husky Tool to take a look at. And also just to make life a little bit easier for you or because I'm such a nice guy, every item is linked in the description below. So without further delay, let's get to the review. Okay, to start things off, we have this 1500 lumen LED light. Now what's cool about this light is it can be reconfigured into a ton of different orientations. The head on the light will rotate 360 degrees. Uh, it pivots forward and back. And right now I have it oriented to stand up by itself. If you press this tab here on the back, you can now use this as a clamp, so I could clamp it to my workbench if I want and shine it right at the camera, which probably looks awesome. And every time you press the button, it's going to change the light intensity. So it has a high, a low, and then just off. On the back of the light, you have a charge indicator, so you know how much battery life you have left. And also this light charges via USB, so it just uses a standard USB plug, but it has one actually included with the light. So as you can see, I've used this a lot already. In our recent laundry room renovation, which you can check out here if you're interested, I used this light in three main aspects of this project. One was getting even lighting in the room while I was painting. I set up the light on an angle to have what's called a raking light so I can see how well the paint and how evenly the paint is going on. I used this underneath the base cabinet when I was changing out the sink and installing the faucet. And then I also used this when I was changing out the overhead light fixture because crazy enough, you need to have the main light off when you're changing it. So that way you don't get electrocuted. So this is the 1500 lumen work light. Check it out. All right, so this is the 27 ounce dead blow hammer. And at first glance, you might be wondering, that looks like a rubber mallet. What's the big deal? But there's a big difference. I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear that? So what makes a dead blow hammer different than a rubber mallet is that it is filled with lead shot or sand in the head of the hammer. And what that does is it reduces the vibration that's transferred to your arm. It prevents the hammer head from bouncing on the material and it transfers more of the impact into your workpiece. So let me show you real quick. Rubber mallet. You hear that bounce? See that? All right, dead blow hammer. Hmm, there's something different about this, isn't there? It's the lead shot that's inside of the head of this hammer. Now, not all dead blow hammers are made the same. What I like about this one is that the head of the hammer is fully encased in rubber. Now, yes, this rubber is soft. It's going to wear out if you bang it on the edge of a piece of steel, but it is encased in soft rubber so that way it doesn't mar your work surface. I had another dead blow hammer that had caps on either end, and I liked it just fine until one day I was mid-swing and one of those caps flew off of there. And uh, you can probably guess what happened next. The hammer went in the trash because it was no longer usable. So anyways, if you need a dead blow hammer, check this one out. I like it because the head of this hammer is fully encased in rubber and uh, no more flying caps, so check it out. This is the 15-in-1 painter's tool, and this has a ton of different features packed into it, way more so than your standard painter's tool. So let's take a look at some of what this tool has to offer. All right, so this curved section right here is to get the excess paint out of your roller. It's called a roller cleaner. And what you do is you simply put the side of your paint tool against your roller and push down, and you're gonna squeeze out all of that excess paint out of the roller. And not only does that get a lot of excess paint out of your roller, but you're then able to wash this, dry it, and reuse it another time. So here you have a convex and a straight blade scraper. And what these are used for is to clean up those uh, surfaces with flake paint or debris or crud or whatever uh, before you get started on your next painting project. This section right here can be used to pry open the side of a paint can. Here, this little teardrop is actually a nail puller, and the pointed end here is great for removing old caulk from around windows, or if you have a crack in your drywall, you can use this to scrape out around that crack before you repair your drywall. And you can also use the flat blade of this as a spreader for uh, joint compound or putty. The point of this tool is really to be a one-stop shop for your painting repairs. Now, are you going to mud and tape an entire room with this? I wouldn't recommend it, but especially for small touch-up stuff, if you have a can of spackle and you're going around your room, all you really need is this, and you can touch up those spots. So here you have two wrench flats, and these are actually standard sizes for a lot of your airless or HVLP spray guns. That way you can take your spray gun apart and get it clean before you go on to your next painting application. 
So here in the handle you have a cool little accessory. This wheel has four different flat blade screwdriver tips. Now you are not going to be exerting a lot of torque with this thing, I tell you that. But what is great is let's, let's imagine real quick that you forgot to remove one last light plate. Here you go. This is your best friend. This keeps you from going all the way back down to the basement, out to the garage or wherever to get your flat blade screwdriver. Just grab this guy and you can unscrew the screws in your light plate covers and get on with your project. So last but not least feature of this 15-in-1 painter's tool is the bottle opener. That way you can crack open a cold soda and make the best of your painting project. This 6-in-1 stripping plier will handle 8 to 10 gauge solid wire and 10 to 20 gauge stranded wire. It has a wire cutter here on the back and a small needle nose like profile to get into tight spots or to wrap wire uh, around the end of the pliers. Now you may be wishing that you saw a Romex cutter here on the pliers, but don't worry about that. If you hold the pliers about like this and then rotate them around your Romex. You can strip that outer sheathing without cutting the insulation on the wires inside, and then you can use the standard gauge strippers here on the main portion of the wire strippers to cut those internal wires. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so we have a piece of 14-2 Romex, and uh, first off, wire cutters. Amazing, they work just like you'd think they do. Now, I want to strip off this outer sheathing. I'm going to hold this, and I'm just going to kind of Close the pliers a little bit as I'm going around. And it'll take a couple wraps, take a little bit more time than a standard pair of Romex pliers. But if I pull the sheathing back and I remove this inside layer of paper and I inspect the neutral wire and the hot wire, I can see that I have in fact not knit them. I can then strip these individual wires. All right, so let's say that you need to wrap this wire to go around a lug on your outlet or on a switch. Just grab it about there and then rotate it around. And now you can hook this up to your outlet. The last feature that I like on these is that it has a bolt cutter for 832 and 1032 screws. So you just thread your screw in there until it's where you want it to be and then close the pliers and it'll break off that bolt where you need it. There are times when a standard socket wrench just won't fit into a spot, and that's where this 30-piece set of combination ratcheting wrenches comes into play. This set includes 20 standard length wrenches along with 10 stubby wrenches in SAE and metric sizes. These wrenches are clearly marked with a directional arrow of which way to turn the wrench to either loosen or tighten a bolt. And obviously you effectively change the direction of the ratchet by flipping the wrench one side or the other. These wrenches have a 72 tooth ratcheting mechanism in them, which equivalates to a five degree arc term between ratchets. So five degrees, five degrees, five degrees. So you can loosen and tighten bolts in a really small area. This 19 piece extension set has just about every adapter you could need. This set has all kinds of different pieces ranging from quarter inch to half inch. So you have extensions in various lengths, you have adapters that allow you to go up and down in size, and then you also have knuckles that allow you to ratchet in all kinds of different situations. It also has this really cool 3 8 flex extension. Now you're not gonna be able to exert as much torque with this as you will a solid extension, but what's cool is that as the name implies, it is rather flexible. So if you're in a weird situation and a knuckle or a standard extension just won't do the trick, you have this flex extension to pull out and have a go with. So you'll notice on the end of this extension, it is not completely straight. And what that allows you to do is instead of having your socket always be rigid, right in line with the extension, it will actually wobble. And that is super handy if you're in a weird situation underneath the car or in a tight spot where you need just a little extra movement in the socket to get that bolt out. These extensions also have ball detents so that way it will lock your socket in place. One last thought about this set is it comes in this overmold tray. I don't know if they actually intend you to use this long term, but it is nice that you can set this in the drawer of your toolbox and have all of your extensions organized nice and tidy in one spot where they're not just gonna be rolling around in the drawer. So this little guy right here is a spring-loaded adjustable punch. So as the name implies, you don't need a hammer to use it, and you can reduce the amount of impact with this punch by simply turning the back of the punch until you get to your desired setting. So let me show you how to use this. 
So right here I have a board of ash. This is a pretty hard wood. And let's say that I needed to drill a hole. Now this is especially helpful when you are using a hand drill because sometimes those tend to walk, but even on a drill press, you can get a drill bit to try and walk one way or the other. So you simply put the punch on your mark, push down until you hear the click, and right there you have a pretty substantial dimple that's gonna guide your bit straight without it walking off course. Now you can use this punch on a variety of materials including metals and plastics. You don't have to use it just on wood. If you're looking for a substantial storage rack, this is the one to get. This is an industrial welded steel storage rack and each shelf is rated for 2,500 pounds. So add up those four shelves and you're looking at 10,000 pounds of potential storage for whatever you may have. This goes together easily. I would recommend grabbing a dead low hammer and some earmuffs because when you get to putting this thing together, it can get pretty noisy. The total assembly time was about 10 minutes from start to finish. These shelves are adjustable in three inch increments, so that allows you to customize your rack to fit whatever you may have in your shop or garage. And if you want to see more tool reviews from me, stick around because those are coming up in a playlist in just a second. Ah, oh, you're still there. Awesome. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I got another one queued up for you right here. And if you want other awesome content from me, check out those. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe. And until next time, have fun making something.